So gut. Ich habe noch ein anderes, was ich mir gerne angucken wollen würde, weil mir das in die Timeline gespült wurde. Da geht es nämlich um den, äh, das ist von Misha. Ich glaube, Misha ist eine, <lacht> eine Institution am Nürburgring auf der Nordschleife. Und äh, hier geht es wohl um den Motion Rig. Und das würde ich mir gerne mal angucken, inwieweit äh, das da getestet wurde und was da jemand zu sagt, der alles Leben fährt. Oh, this is my favorite part with the sim. Okay, warte kurz. Ich habe noch nicht äh, das Richtige gemacht. Ich Arsch. Because it simulates the, it transcends the curve stone so perfectly, especially on the rear axle. Hoppa, off we go. Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back not to the Nürburgring but back to Croatia. I went here for a holiday, for a weekend and actually for the first time ever I took my driving shoes with me. Entschuldigung. No, we're not gonna drive Rimats, but it has to do something with Rimats because I'm here to, today together with Tino, with uh, we are actually ex-colleagues yeah. from Rimats, we both used to work there. But the reason why I took my driving shoes is because Tino built something quite special and it is actually a motion simulator. So it's not a type of content that you would usually expect on my channel, but then again, we started recently doing some sim driving, so a lot of you people will appreciate it, but it is actually, the more you look at it, the more blows it you away that one man can build something like that and there's even more like behind it so Tino walk us through the the specs where should we start first what's your favorite part of the sim ah uh, where could I where should I begin uh, favorite part I think okay, that's that schon wieder so next level thing was ist denn da unten im Lenkrad drin? Okay, hier wurde wirklich eine Menge. Okay, jetzt oh, hi, oh. The favorite part is the motion part. Yeah. And there's, so there's quite a lot of things going on here. So yeah. we have all kinds of actuators. So what do each of one of them do? So these two actuators are for the heave motion, so the, all the bumps on the road and the up and down motion. Mm -hmm. And also they can uh, move the platform like this, so they can simulate uh, side forces and mm -hmm. uh, side G forces. Then we have traction loss. This is traction loss actuator. Mm -hmm. This is pretty important one because uh, that one simulates uh, The traction loss and the oh ja, das ist aber auch schon wieder äh, was ganz anderes. <lacht> ich habe jetzt gedacht, er kommt so um eine Ecke mit. Äh, ja, ich habe mir bei D-Box 1 gekauft und habe das an Alu Rig rangeknallt. Nee, äh, das hier ist was anderes. Fast side forces of the car, so you can feel uh, what uh, the rear of your car is doing. Mm -hmm. like, uh, when you're over a bump and you can feel your re rear end uh, becoming loose or mm -hmm. the, the grip of the rear tires and everything. Nice. Then we have uh, this actuator here. Uh, okay. This one is for the acceleration and deceleration forces. Mm -hmm. And what it does, it moves this uh, seat uh, rest uh, forward or backwards. So mm -hmm. it pushes this part of the seat up, up your back and simulating the car acceleration. Yes. So you can really feel the car power. Uh, which is, I really like that one because it's quite immersive. Usually uh, in the static motion sim, you cannot feel the actual, actual power of the car. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the fun one Yeah, <laughs> for me. I'm excited to try it out. And then we have this shaker system. It's uh, custom made by me. You can maybe see it's uh, from speaker. Yeah. Speakers that are modified. Yeah, the shaker system is important uh, because uh, they simulate like road texture uh -huh. and uh, engine vibrations and uh, like uh, all this. Okay, das ist das Abgefahrenste, was ich bis dato gesehen habe, was Motion angeht. Bin ich ganz ehrlich. Das ist das Abgefahrenste, was ich mir jemals angesehen habe. Uh, frequencies that are a lot higher than this uh, actuators can do. So they mm. are pretty important and uh, I can actually show to Misha when I turn them off yeah. what's the difference so you can see what, cool. what is what are his opinion about it nice so you're running a triple screen yeah setup? I'm running a triple screen a Samsung G7 monitor 32 inch I have this Asus, Asus free bezel kit so you don't see the monitor bezels wow yeah that's nice and then for the computer geeks yeah, I, we have uh, 3080 graphic cards to run this, and uh, yeah, it's basically yeah. So for pretty. pedals, it's Fanatec. Or Fanatec V3, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, Fanatec DD2. Okay. Wheelbase, and uh, it's quite it's a bit modified. We have an extension here. 
Okay. So it goes a little bit further out. Uh, that's yes. also done by me. And then you have also full control panel over here. Yeah, this is, I have like, everything is electrified, so we can move the pedals. Oh yeah. So this Up. is... Frage, du musst dir mal überlegen, Alter, du hast da den krassesten Scheißrad gebaut und dann, ne? It's like an entire, way. entire rig goes up and down, we can do the pedals up and down, change the pedal angles, so we can go up or down, and jump. <laughs> das ist ja absolut richtig, das ist ja richtig gestört. The angle, or nice. the, wow. the whole pedals go... Oh yeah, in the away or away closer. or towards. You can set it up the way you Jesus like. Jesus yeah. Christ! Yeah. So and, and just one more time to emphasize, you built it all by yourself. Yeah, <laughs> like software, hardware. Yeah, in this house. No, uh, actually, I, I uh, the the software part I bought, so yeah. I didn't do the software part, but uh, the setuping of the software, yeah. which is, I think, uh, the most important part was done by me. Yeah, no, this is this is incredible. There are so much things that we can cover into detail, but it's going to be a very long video. But I'm not going to repeat Tino because he actually made a very long video explaining every single part that yeah. that you can find on this channel. So check out the video description. Now let's proceed with the most important part. Actually, me driving it for me because I'm very excited to try out because a lot of people, like a lot of local people, local drivers. Like Miro, Murgut, the, the test driver from Rimat said, you should go and try it because it's really that good. And I'm like, okay, let's see how it is. And then we'll proceed with the final best thing after my verdict. So stay tuned. Well, let's hop in and give it a go. So we're driving iRacing. Yeah. Um, 992 okay. Cup. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. And uh, for me, I haven't driven sim for like a month by now. Yeah, maybe a few weeks, I would say, but not much action at all. Haven't driven iRacing in many, many months and haven't driven real life, of course, also also quite long. So it's going to be interesting to find out how it reacts because the key aspect, or would say unique selling point of this actual simulator is this actually trying to, again, simulate the real life as close as possible. And in comparison to other sims, other sims tend to be like maybe a bit overreacting when it comes to motion, just to give too much of feedback, which actually then again, either the drivers or the average people just don't like because it's just simply too much. So yeah, okay, enough talking. Let's hop in and see uh, how, it, how it drives. So we have an interesting camera setup that's usually unusual for my channel. So I'm running a GoPro on my head for you. And Tina will be catch capturing my emotions, my first impressions. Okay, so the pedals need to be a bit further away from me. Which one is it? For the pedals, it's this one. Okay. And for the seat, is this one. So we can. Okay. Be yeah. guy, is that the wheel on? Put it in neutral and just give it yes. <laughs> Can you feel the... Oh yeah, the vibrations. It's like, it's leaning over a bit. Yeah. <laughs> and just go. All right. I'm really excited for this one. Uh, crazy, that's really the chat beantworten. Ich tu das nicht. Ich bin raus aus der Nummer. You got wheel damage. <laughs> oh, getting used to, getting used to. Well, the crashes are at least the right part. Just getting used to the field of view as well. Let's try it without this so I can get used to the thing first. Okay. The elevation changes are very done very nicely. Yeah. You can really feel all the bumps. My main issue is uh, it's just really my issue is because 
my field of view is completely different in, oh, I mean, yeah. in comparison to my sim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I need to just like, like really adjust to the um, to the position, of my face and yeah, eyes yeah. and where I am. So that's like it's gonna take a bit to get adjusted to that. Okay. Okay, so after getting used to the simulator for about one lap, getting used to the depth of field and also the way that the paddles handle, the way that the steering wheel handles, because completely different experience, I think I'm not completely dialed in now, but at least I am not going to suck too much. The first impression is absolutely phenomenal. The way that it transcends the movements, especially in the back towards the seat, through all the curb stones, through all the small bumps. This is completely what makes a difference, what makes it worth to have a motion rig. Like, especially here, for example, when we go towards Hohenrein Chicane, there's a curb stone on the right and it has some, uh, some rumbles, right, like uh, bricks. This you really feel through the seat and it gives you also here, this on, this one curb stone, it gives you extra awareness of the grip on the rear rear axle something that will prepare you for the real life because it's been with real -wheel driven cars for example like we're driving now the 992 gt3 the importance of grip on the rear axle is phenomenal and this is something you can only feel through your butt and to know uh to know what is happening there is again through the nice transition through the seat and if you Warte mal. Hat er, grad, er hat gerade gesagt, dass er GT3 fährt, oder? Warum rutscht er? Weil ABS kickt ja gar nicht rein. You are on a curb stone, oder on a slippery surface. You need to know that you should not go on the truck. Ist doch immer noch der Cup. So, for example here. Oder? Yep. Or be at least very delicate and very gentle with the throttle to be able to make it and not to make very big or bad mistakes. And it's also interesting to see how on my simulator, that where I don't have any motion, I get all the feedback through the steering wheel, like the the grip levels and everything. And when I'm driving here, so I'm completely focused on what is happening with the steering wheel when I'm driving my sim. Here now, I'm actually focused more on the driving like you would do with with the car you're like one with the car or in this case one with the sim because you don't have to rely on steering wheel inputs as much as you would have on a non-motion sim because you're getting all the proper inputs when you feel that the back is coming out yeah you can actually at least kind of more or less save the situation maybe not completely but not wreck it and that probably would not have happened if i would just focus on driving and not talking but the fact that they can do it after one lap is kind of confirming that for me this is good because again for people who don't know me i'm not a sim racer and i for many years i was really against sims i just like didn't like the way they felt because there was too much of a difference between the real life and and the real sim racing and and sim racing i mean but this is now a completely different experience. It can really help you become a better driver. I mean, I obviously used to say it as well with, with every sim nowadays, but when it comes to being a race car driver, this really simulates everything to such, to such detail. Especially here at Xmule, if you watched our track walk series where I explained that the back end kicks out of all rear driven cars, you could feel very nicely in, this, in, the, in the seat that the back end wanted to step out and you could already correct it before. Oh, ich würde das gerne sehen, wie das aussieht von außen. It would move out, that you otherwise would have to do with, the, with your steering wheel, with the feedback that you get from the steering wheel. So again, it adds so much more immersion and proper detail without being 
obnoxious without annoying you too much because it tries to overcompensate or like over exaggerate things. This was, this is definitely like a big key component that it is, it is balanced with the real, with the real thing. And again, also in this regard, when other motion rigs are just like way too much, and it's fun, yeah, of course, when you jump on Flood's Garden, you, like that thing kicks you up and you're like, oh my God, I made a massive jump. But the problem that you get for, well, either you just don't like it because it's obnoxious, but if you are comparing it to real life, the inputs, the, this, the motion sensors inputs that you get from a car that make it actually, uh, how should I put it correctly, wait. The, the small inputs that you get from the car usually have major consequences. So you really need to feel them properly. They are really not that bad. Like, why do people, again, why this majority of people actually crash their car of beginner drivers? Because, well, if you can see it coming from a mile away, it's not that hard to, to predict it and to counter steer. But in reality, the, the signals that the car is slipping away that you need to catch it, that you're losing grip or whatever, are actually microscopic. And there's a very fine level between having the right amount of feedback, which is on a very low side, and having too much feedback that is just like over exaggerated and fake. But in this case, it's. Uh, I think it's 32, Brian. Pretty much nailed in comparison to real life thing. Well, didn't have any severe crashes, and I'm kind of happy with that. I'm proud of that. So, <laughs> okay, finishing on the main straights. Let's do one more lap, and then we're done. There are, of course, a lot of things that I could still try to set up correctly for myself, like the seating position, etc. But we were going to be spending otherwise way too much time. But already, like. Like the, the stuff that I was able to achieve when it comes to getting the proper feedback through the sim in those first two laps, I think this is our third lap now, maybe fourth, it's, it's really impressive. Like all the sensory input has been completely nailed, nailed down correctly. I find it always super interesting when Fahrer from the real life sich in eine Sim setzen und darüber erzählen. Oh, this is my favorite part with the Sim. Because <laughs> it simulates the... It transcends the curve stone so perfectly, especially on the rear axle. Hoppa! Off we go. Really, really good. Definitely now the fastest that I've been through this corner so far today. Ich weiß nicht, wie Leute mit Boxen fahren können. Das wird mir so auf den Sack gehen. Weil du die ganze Zeit die Aktuatoren quietschen. Hört ihr das Quietschen von den Aktuatoren? Das ist ein sehr schwieriger Part. Foxhole, especially in Sims. Aber, wie man sieht, It was not that hard. What I'm actually trying to say is that in usually in the Sims you're lacking the sensory inputs that you would be getting from a real life car when you're exiting Foxhole because there's so much happening. Elevation changes, compression, you're going over the curbstone. There's so many directional changes 
that you need to understand and feel, or that you can feel with the real li life car, that me personally, after driving for almost a year on the sim, get it wrong on the sim, or at least I don't get enough feedback to go as fast as I would go with a normal car. But here, you can feel that you get all those inputs. Yep. Wow, that was amazing. Uh, maybe phenomenal is even a better word for multiple reasons. Because A, the sim is able to transcend those really micro inputs that otherwise be usually over exaggerated by multiple sims. And again, for me, I'm mostly like, I'm not a sim driver. I'm a, like a real road car driver. So for me, like I'm still even after a year getting used to like the sim racing inputs. And in this case, like the first lap, first corner was disaster. Yeah. <laughs> The first lap was bad, but then it, like, it was gradually progressing. So it was like, really, I had to actually adjust myself that I'm not driving actually similar later, but the way I would be driving a real car, because I had to uh, use all of my body, all the um, sensory inputs, like also from the back, from the seat that you otherwise do not have on a normal, on, on a normal sim. And my biggest challenge came from the, the field of view that like the, the sim that I'm driving is actually set up in a completely different way. I had to get used to that. So this thing, machine TS designer, how do you call it? TS Custom. <laughs> TS Custom is doing a phenomenal job in, in doing all of that. I'm really impressed. But the most impressive fact is that Tino is actually not a race car driver. Or you have never yeah. been in the race car. I've never been in a race car. And yet, I've been I've been in Porsche Taycan, yeah, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I was actually in the Vera, but uh, we were not on a racetrack. Yeah, I mean not on a real racetrack, so it was like just acceleration, deceleration, yeah. and. But to get those like fine inputs, the, the way that you're able to transcend it, because again everything is built by you and set up by you, and this is just like something that. My God, it, it reminds me of Tom Shermer in a way, who builds like fastest BMWs of the Nürburgring, but does not drive them ever or Nürburgring himself. But you can set up the suspension this fine that you don't know why. So sometimes maybe you need to think so much out of the box, you should probably get to Mars and leave the box in the earth. So, something like that. And that's probably why you, you made it, because yeah, usually probably I, other people would I, be just like too much distracted by other things. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't copy anything. Yeah, I just did it the way I thought it is best. So you did. I, I, I of course uh, did some research. I uh, checked other sims how they are made, but in the end, I did it everything. I did everything uh, the way I thought it is best. So yeah, I think. No, this I, is I hope it's. I hope it's really that good. It definitely <laughs> is. And again, as mentioned, you can find more on Tino's channel on how everything is built and set That's up. Nice and uh, you can also ask him all the questions there, uh, so he can answer them to you directly. What's the plan from here? Is this just like your own toy, or are you planning on actually making it into production for people to buy it, or what's the? I actually don't know. Uh... I, I don't want to go into uh, for now. I don't want to go into any serial production. It would be per customer request. Maybe okay. uh, I might even have one order for one uh, custom made, like this yeah. custom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, we'll see. Uh, for now, it's just. But he had halt vorne gar keine Aktuatoren, ne? Also er hat alles am am Sitz quasi. I Is there to... any way you can put a price tag on this if you would, if people would uh, ask for it? Yeah, it's crazy. It's best not, I mean, of not course. To, to talk about it. Basically, if you need to ask how much it costs, you cannot afford it. <laughs> that's, that's how it usually works. <laughs> right. Okay. I think that's pretty much all I had to say. Ganz unrecht hat er damit nicht. Again, um, I wish I had more time to play with it, but I have also other uh, things to do here, unfortunately or luckily here in Zagreb. So. Thank you very much, Nemo, for this amazing experience. Thank you. And I'm um, uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, yeah to maybe do something more with it in the future. Who knows when I have more time. And also seeing you at the Nürburgring, if we can like go for a real life lab. That would be nice. And I'll, um, <laughs> I'll definitely crash less than I did on the sim. When you when you the lamp sees, the on the deck hangs, and how that so all is constructed, you know that there is a lot of DIY in <laughs> Das sieht schon so richtig nach DIY aus. Aber es ist halt wild, oder? Dass, äh, dass sich halt jemand äh, zu Hause hinsetzt und so ein Ding baut und einfach eigentlich gar keinen Plan hat und einfach mal losmacht. Lubo, ich grüße dich, was geht? Ähm... Um